Hey friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with a 10 cards, one kit video for the Simon Says Stamp March 2018 card kit. So the I'm showing the contents of the kit here. It's the kit called Choose Joy and it includes the Simon Says Stamp Choose Joy clear stamp set, the Showers and Flowers clear stamp set, Holly Hawk Mini Hybrid Ink, Wisteria Mini Hybrid Ink, Darice White Pom Poms, 12 double sided sheets of Cartabella Spring Market 6x6 paper, 2 Cartabella Spring Market sticker sheets that, as far as I understand, are exclusive to the kit and not available otherwise, a 3 pack of Simon Says Stamp Pre Scored Cardstocks in Cream, Tonic Glitter Gloss Aqua Shimmer Pen, and then some envelopes from Simon Says Stamp in Metallic Lavender, Khaki Wood Grain, and Cotton Candy. A sheet of Nino Solar White 110 pound cardstock, 100 pound Desert Storm, and then Simon Says Stamp Cotton Candy Green Apple, and then Green Leaf cardstock. To get started, I am not going to use the cardstock for card bases. That's just because I prefer to use them for other purposes when I'm having high quality colored cardstock like that. I don't want to just cut it up for card bases. Same thing with like the Nina or the um, also the desert, the Nina White or the Desert Storm. I'd rather do some techniques with them. So I'll be just using plain white card bases. I should have used some of the Simon Says Stamp Cream card bases that came with the kit, but I kind of forgot about them as I put them off to the side and started working with the papers. So I would use more if I had remembered. I decided as I got started to keep it simple and create a simple pattern, or sorry, a simple card with some pattern paper and the giant hello sticker from the stamp set. The thought there, and I've talked about this in other 10 cards, one kit videos, is you're going to make a lot of cards in a short amount of time. And so to kind of get the juices flowing, sometimes it's fun and productive to just make a card come together really, really fast to just kind of get things going, at least for me personally. So I knew that if I cut up this really pretty pattern paper and left the row of flowers at the bottom, a simple hello sentiment would finish it off pretty nicely. And here I'm going to mount it on some of the pink cardstock. Then I another thing that I knew I wanted to do but wasn't going to be fast was coloring this duck. Now I know that seeing the Copic coloring for the duck could be really useful, however, I, it, that would take a long time and this is supposed to be a 10 cards, one kit video. So stopping to do coloring each time just would make the video excessively long. It already is half an hour long. So I did want to share some tips though. I like to color starting from the darkest and moving to the lightest. I just feel like it saves a little bit of ink and time, but some people aren't so comfortable with that. Also, I stamped it, but then I trimmed that piece of cardstock slightly smaller than the circle that I put on top of it or so the panel with the circle that I put on top of it that way if my duck wasn't completely centered when I stamped it down it didn't matter because I could center it inside the circle instead of trying to center it on the original piece of cardstock and I just picked a piece of cardstock from the kit or sorry, a piece of pattern paper from the kit that was relatively neutral I thought that that black pattern paper really helped the rainbow colors of the duck shine through and I did decide to try to make a rainbow duck even though it maybe wasn't the most logical thing since the underside of the umbrella is blue and the outside is purple but I was just having fun with it. And one of the things that really attracted me to this kit since I haven't bought a Simon Says Stamp kit in a very long time is be that it has two stamp sets in it. And so two stamp sets and two little mini ink cubes made it a pretty good value. For my next card, I am stamping down the bunny and I wind up using the bunny a lot. The chick was my favorite image from any of the stamps, but he's pretty complicated, whereas the bunny can be colored easily or not be colored at all. Here I'm using the plaid from the showers and flowers on top of the bunny from, or sorry, the, the bunnies from showers and flowers and I believe the plaid is from choose joy because there's two different stamp sets, so I kind of get them mixed up a little bit, but hopefully it's clear enough what I'm doing. I'm using the two inks from the kit. The pink is the hollyhock color, um, and then the purple is the wisteria, as their names suggest. And I'm using my Misty to help line up these plaid images. I have stamped my bunny 
onto some Inka Dinka Doo stamping mask paper and then I stamped him directly to my card and covered him and that's how I'm able to stamp right on top of him but when I pull off the mask it's not going to none of the colors are going to be left on the bunny there and I'm able to create this fun pattern I really liked these two colors of inks that were included they were very bold and they were yet a nice like a bold pastel or a bold spring color um, I don't like super super soft pastels and so I think these kind of hit the mark of an in-between area pretty well um, they are definitely a little bit more generally feminine colors but I think that Easter tends to be a bit more feminine but overall this kit has a lot of what we think were traditionally feminine elements and so I do make a point at some like during these 10 cards to make a card that I felt like could be reasonably given to a guy it might be more appealing to a guy and I always say that like of course it's not like no guy loves pink or anything like that and whatever but just in case you kind of thought hey you know I'd like to see how I'm, I'm a different way of using this kit I also, one of the reasons I considered this particular kit when I have not gotten some of the more other kits more recently is I felt like the sentiments, I could use some of them for donating and I could also just use some of the general thank you ones because I do use a lot of thank you cards as a teacher. I am very blessed to have a lot of supportive families and so I, you know, want to, you know, use and make thank you cards for them as well. So here I'm peeling up the mask and at first I wasn't sure if this card would be interesting enough but I really liked the way that it looked and I wish that I had stamped several. You know when I was lining everything up on my Misty I wish I'd put like a few of the bunnies inside and then I could have made a whole slew of these cards pretty easily. I would have had to keep moving the bunny mask though if I wanted to not, if I wanted to keep stamping it or make several bunny masks. Um, or keep lining up the stamps in the Misty. I'm not sure which would have been easier, but that card actually is, once you have the design down, relatively easy to recreate. I really enjoyed the Cartabella paper that came with it. Like I said, it is pretty feminine, which isn't necessarily my style, but I liked how they included space for adding sentiments and images. The patterns weren't just overall patterns all over the pattern paper. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but like they aren't just repeated blank patterns. Some of them have framing elements to them. They had little sheets that you could have cut apart, which was kind of my instinct at first is to cut them apart and maybe use those as sentiments. But as I started looking at them, many of them didn't work very well for sentiments. So there were like little sayings on the different um like one sheet has six rectangles covering it and they all have i think they all have words inside of them but none of them quite rang as a sentiment except for maybe the very small hello one so i resisted the urge to just do that and i also felt like that would be too much like my six by six paper pad videos and i wanted to make some more unique cards because i was working with a card kit instead which came with stamps and inks and all of that if you are interested in more cards with six by six paper though I do have a lot of six by six paper pad tutorials on my channel and we'll be sharing more soon as well I did just order some of the new doodle bug down on the farm as I had gotten a request in the comments to see that one I wanted to take advantage of the colored ink that came with the kit and try to do some stamping with it instead of always stamping with black ink and coloring images in but like see if I could make the bunny sort of stand on its own without any coloring if I use something more interesting like the ink. Ultimately, it's not my favorite card. I think it's a little bit plain. I think I would like to do something more to jazz it up, but, and I could see like adding maybe some ribbon. However, I really try to stick as close to the supplies in the kit as possible with the exception of adding markers and black ink because I don't expect every kit to come with markers and black ink. They assume that you have those um, or some kind of colored pencils, whatever, some kind of coloring element. So I don't feel bad about adding coloring elements to them. But I do try to stick to the embellishments and stamp sets and stuff that come with the kit rather than adding a bunch of my own so that you can see what the kit can do. 
So here is my more masculine card. And sorry that it's a little bit out of frame there, but I noticed that there were a lot of simple gardening elements in the kit, which to me doesn't have a masculine or feminine slant. There's plenty of men and women who enjoy gardening. So if I pair some of these gardening elements with the wood grains, because I think there was at least two wood grain pattern papers included, that it would be well suited for pretty much anyone. And that's kind of how I made my most masculine or typically masculine card of the collection. And I use it as a thanks card there. I would also urge you to kind of think about it like these are meant in a garden context. So if you added some garden tools and a flower, I don't think it would come off as feminine. But I also just wanted to keep that one simple. I'm kind of trying to do a mix of simpler and more complicated cards, like the little card where I colored in the duck took a lot of time, whereas that last card where I just stuck down some stickers didn't take very much time at all. Another thing that I'm considering is trying to use my scraps as I go and trying to use the stickers in the kit that make the most sense right away. Honestly, once I had made the cards that I make today, and it was a few more than 10, I don't know how much more I would want to use this paper pad. It was fun to work with, but again, it wasn't 100% my style. So I wanted to use some of the scraps right away and not be left with lots of little tiny pieces of it. And that's what I'm doing here. I have this circle from where I made the chick card and I'm able to layer it up with a stripe of pattern paper from a different card that I had chopped down. I have these this wood grain bit that was also from the uh, last card that I made. They're all just kind of scraps other than that back black floral, ple floral piece. Um, and I am pretty comfortable working with scraps after trying to create, like I said, I have six by six paper pad tutorials where I use an entire paper pad at one time. So it's made me a little bit more comfortable with pattern mixing and things like that. And so while those were a little bit bold, I've gotten used to um, realizing that the people who created these pattern papers created them all to match. They're all from the same collection and they're meant to work well together. So even if at first they seem a little bit different, um, generally you can mix pattern paper from a coordinating set without having to worry too much if they match. I did use one of these cut aparts, but I didn't use one with words on it. I actually added my own words, which was the choose joy sentiment. As I said before, I didn't feel like a lot of them really had good card sentiments except for the hello. So adding my own, especially with that wreath there, that really kind of called for having something in the center, I thought that was an opportunity to use one of the pretty sentiments from the Choose Joy stamp set. And again, here I'm creating a relatively quick card. I'll get back to some of my more complicated cards as we go on. But I do, oh, and here I'm also using one of the cream card bases, finally, that I've, like, remembered that they're there, and then I forget about them again. So, sorry about that. But like I said, I'm not too worried about using the cardstock from the kit. I have plenty of high-quality white cardstock that I can use for card bases anytime that I'm interested. What I did notice as I was making this card for the first time, and again, I feel kind of silly that it took me this long to realize it, is that one of the sticker sheets has a white background and one has a cream background. So there, when I placed down those st stickers in the corners, I realized one of them was cream and one of them was white, which wasn't ideal, but if I pulled it up, I was really afraid I was gonna tear the card. And so I decided to just kind of roll with it and be okay with the fact that I made a little mistake there or perceived mistake. It might not even be a mistake if you prefer that actually. I had created this bunny mask and I really liked the way that that plaid pattern worked with it and I had attempted, uh, well I created a striped card with this long stripe from the same stamp set earlier and it just did not turn out in a way that I was happy as one of my 10 cards for the kit. So I decided to repurpose the idea with the bunny rabbit. I figured if he looked great masked off with the plaid, he'd also look great masked off with the stripe and it would give me another opportunity to use the pink and purple inks that came with the kit. Although I understand if people kind of think, well, this really isn't that much different than the last card you made with the bunny since I am using a very similar technique, but I just wanted to 
um, show off the fun stripe pattern that you can create with this. It's not a solid stripe. It does have a little detail that makes it look a bit like ribbon, but of course is perfectly flat, which is nice. Um, these cards are easy for mailing. The only thing I would say in the kit that's a little bit um, would make it a little bit tricky is those pom-poms are super big and I feel like even too big for the bunny and then they would make it pretty tricky to mail but I'm sure a lot of you are giving or like physically handing off Easter cards so I think he would be fun to add that cotton tail for and then um, you know hand deliver those Easter cards but yeah sometimes when they include those little extra things in kits I'm not quite sure what to do with them because I mail off a lot of my cards. I don't hand out as many in person. Luckily though, when you donate your cards, you make a large box of them. And I do donate a lot of cards as well. You make a large box of them. And so they don't have to be put in individual envelopes. They don't have to be flat because like Cards for Hospitalized Kids physically hands the cards off. Anyway, that's a random tangent there I need to focus on the card that I am making but really I'm just stamping a lot with my misty and I use as you can see these are nice inks but I still have to stamp several times partly because this is a really solid stamp and maybe honestly if I didn't have my misty I would modify my stamping a little bit I'd make sure that it was very very well inked and I would hold my stamp to the paper for longer and let the ink absorb. That was a big tip that I received um, a couple years ago in a different video. People saying like, if you feel like you're not getting a great impression with the stamp block, this was before I had a Misty, um, to just kind of leave it on the paper longer or to stamp it on a softer surface and things like that. So that would be my suggestion if you don't have a Misty, but a Misty sure is making this easy. Any stamp positioner tool would do the same thing. Like getting the hey there hop stuff on a nice angle and knowing that I liked the angle before I stamped it down. One of those, the clear benefits of having a stamp positioning tool. I'm just going to add a touch of detail to the bunny here. When I add the touch of detail to the bunny, I'm happening to, I happen to be using R00 and R20, I believe. Um, but it really doesn't matter whatever pink colors you have in markers or colored pencil can add a simple detail to the bunny. At this point, I had gotten a little obsessed with the idea of actually using the inks since the kit did come with inks. And many times in the past, as you all know, if you've watched my other Simon Says Stamp kit videos, I ink swipe. And I've done this with Hero Arts kits too because they've come with ink cubes a lot. And I like to do this like fun ink swiping thing. Um, and if you're curious about what more what that looks like, I would check out one of the old videos. But I wanted to do something else with the ink cubes that wasn't the ink swiping so that you guys could, you know, be like get a new idea from me instead of me just making a very similar card. So I use the ink cube kind of as a square stamp to create a pattern. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to be a little bit tricky to line up because... You, of course, you're looking through, like the stamp pad isn't clear like a stamp, like um, clear stamps are. And so you have to be a little bit more careful. I kind of try to like look on the side before I stamp it down. My my last purple square there got a little too far over, but it'll be all right. And I just kind of tried to create a simple and fun pattern with these blocks. I think if you added a few more colors it could be really fun too I think you if you just use this idea outside of the kit and it would just have another fun way of using your ink cubes to create rainbows or diamonds if you turn them on their side and yeah I just hope that I want to play with the idea more but it was one way to create another background without taking a lot of time or having to stamp repeatedly because these these particular ink pads that I received were nice and juicy and ready to go to stamp down these blocks fairly well. They're not perfect, as you can see, and as I mentioned earlier. To finish off the card, I'm just going to stamp the thanks and a little bit of the bunny there in the corner. I think that right now Easter's on my mind, so I keep seeing this bunny and thinking like he's only for Easter, but of course, Bunnies are just cute all times of year, so I think that using it on a thanks card is going to be fine. At first, I'll be tempted to only use it at Easter, but then realize there's no reason to restrict myself. This is not an Easter kit. I don't even think there are any Easter sentiments in the whole thing. Next up, back to the idea of using scraps. 
So I have a bunch of thin scraps on my desk from the various things I've been cutting or I'm able to cut down some slightly larger stripes into even thinner ones. And I want to use them to again create an interesting pattern. In some ways I will say it's pretty similar to what I did with stamping the stripe because I'm just going to lay these patterned paper pieces at a diagonal just kind of the way that I did with those but um, I think it creates a pretty different look and I still hope that you enjoy the card but as always if you want you can leave a comment below letting me know what's your favorite card or what you would like to see different about 10 kits 10 cards, one kit videos. I don't do them super regularly as I'm not on any design teams like that anymore. Um, or I don't, I don't actually subscribe to any of the kits right now, but it's still helpful feedback to know what you find helpful about these videos. I think also if you wanted to mix it up, you could add the sentiment in between some layers of stripes. So I stop the stripes and then put my sentiment on top. You could of course um, stop in the middle of the stripes add a sentiment and either add the sentiment all the way across as another stripe or just add it part way across and then finish it off with some more pattern paper. I think there's ways to mix up this idea if you think it's a little bit too similar to the other bunny card but I liked it as a way to use up some scraps and I'm just putting some adhesive all across the strip laying it down over the card base and then I will cut off all of the edges. I find that to be way easier than trying to measure anything ahead of time. If you don't, if you're a little bit concerned about going straight to your card base, which is a legitimate concern considering I messed up my first card base by taping something in the wrong spot and tearing my card base. Although you can flip it over and just leave the torn side on the back. Nobody will notice or care. Um, you could uh, instead do all of this onto a panel and then attach the panel to your card base. And that might be... Um, you know, it's just a little bit more comfortable for you. I'm trying to figure out how to use more of these stickers. Some of them are really cute and pretty, but some of the sayings, like they're just, they're not a card sentiment to me. I, but I know that not everybody feels like you have to, the words on a card have to be a sentiment. So maybe that's kind of where I'm going wrong with it. But Stamping a sentiment along the top there would work or adding a sticker that you felt like, you know, suited as a sentiment. But there's so many sentiments in the stamp sets. I don't even know why I was trying to use the stickers. So next up, I think I am on my final card now. I've kind of lost count, but this one becomes pretty detailed. There will be a coordinating blog post. So when I post this video, in the video description below towards the top you'll see a blog post on the blog post i'll just share a picture of every card so that you can look at it in a little bit more detail and i'll try to share some information like possible measurements if that's relevant or maybe some copic colors if i remember what i used etc cetera, etc cetera. i just try to include a little bit of information and um here i have cut a mask it's just a piece of type typing paper and I've cut a circle out of it, then I've covered most of my card with it, just leaving a circle area free. And the point of that is when I lift it up, it will look like I've stamped in a circle, but there's going to be all these little carrots that overlap the edge of the circle. So they'll be masked off and it will look like a perfect circle, even though that's not actually what I'm stamping. Um, but I wanted to mention, sorry, <laughs> previously, that um, this card kit, as you probably know, is sold out and has been. This is mostly meant to be inspiration for people who already have the card kit, but um, I will be selling part of what's left of my card kit just because I know I have so many supplies that now that I've made so many cards with this, I've made like 12 or so cards, um, which is not a ton, but still, you know, I probably won't be reaching for it. I'll probably have something else that I want to use next so anyway I am stamping the carrots and since I even though it's in my misty the only reason it's in my misty is to hold it down to hold that mask down because it's not sticky it's just a piece of typing paper you could of course create a mask with ink a dink a do stamping mask paper but I think that that would be a lot of mask paper to use and there's no real reason for it in my mind when you're you could use a, just a piece of washi tape to hold it down or here like I'm just using 
the magnet from my Misty to hold it down. I'm stamping the carrot all around. I'm, you know, trying to make it random, but I'm also trying to sort of puzzle it together so that they make a little bit of sense and I don't have really large gap areas or anything like that. I also stamped a few before I went, like I stamped some off the, on the scratch masking paper before I went right to my card. And the reason for that was because it's a brand new stamp and I find that any brand new stamp, because I hadn't stamped the carrot before during this video, um, any brand new stamp doesn't stamp perfectly the first time. So I'd rather stamp it in black a few times off on some scratch paper or do something to condition my stamp before going right to my project and then not being happy and then trying to trace over the lines or whatever. I mean, you can. You, if, you, if you're stamping something in black and you don't like it, the thing is, is you have a black marker. You may not have a marker to match all of your inks, but you will for black. And so that is one way you can just trace over the line of the image that didn't turn out perfectly. And I do that a lot to save myself. So um, I see I'm kind of like ducking a little bit close here because I am trying to color these pretty detailed carrots. So uh, excuse that little bit of like hair nonsense in the corner. Um, but I am coloring the carrots, sorry, <laughs> totally lost the word for carrots for a second there. Uh, I believe it's with YR07 and Y16. It could be YR04 though. Again, it really doesn't matter. They're such teeny tiny carrots. Pick two oranges, add a bit of shading. Pick two greens for the leaves and add a bit of shading. I think that the tiny, tiny bit of shading really does make a difference. I encourage you to try adding two colors instead of just one. It will bring a lot of depth, but it is a lot slower too. So, you know, you could just color them solid if that's more your um, style. I do like how this masked off image look. It creates a really clean and simple look, like a really clean and simple card overall. Like I'm coloring directly onto the card base here. But that bit of masking gives it some interest. It kind of like, you know, makes you question, hey, is this really flat on the card or not? And things like that. Um, I'm adding a little bit of shading to the bunny as well. At first, I thought I was going to keep him white and save myself some coloring time. But after I saw the carrots, I just really thought he'd come to life and pop more with a bit of shading. So I'm using the C3-1 and I think I'll eventually blend out with the C00. I tend to use warm colors for animals, but certain animals, their the tone of their fur is a little bit more of a cool color to me and bunnies are one of them. So a lot of times if I'm coloring a critter that's black, I will, or white or gray or whatever I'll tend towards the warms but here I think the the neutral sorry the cools really work however I encourage you to just use whichever grays you have I like having the warm and cools but I don't think you need all of them I don't think you need the neutrals and toners and all that in Copic markers I know some people sometimes ask about which colors they you know are worth investing in and so that's just a little thought and I, I think that a lot of Copic colorists tend to agree on those particular recommendations. In terms of how I'm shading here, I'm kind of just trying to add some interesting shadows. Like there will be a shadow underneath his chin because his head is blocking the light there or like where his ear is blocking the light. There tends to be shadows on the ground. It will make it look like there's more of a ground if I put shadows at the bottom of his feet. So I'm doing things like that, but... Yeah, I, I don't have a light source. It's not a scene card. So that's one of the reasons I don't always create scene cards because then you have to consider all of that sort of stuff. And it's just, I like to just add some dimension with my shading. That's my main goal. So I did want to use one of these pom-poms because it's such a cute idea to have a little fluffy tail. So while I didn't use a fluffy tail on any other card, I'm like, I'm going to make one fluffy tail. However, when I went to put the pom-pom right onto his tail, I was just like, that is just way too big. So I cut it in half and then I glued the pom-pom down with, I think I used like a glue dot or something to adhere it. So I'm flipping through the cards, but again, there's a blog post. You can check out the blog post to see the cards in more detail, see them one by one. Also, as I mentioned earlier, I am going to sell, I'm going to say part of my kit. I'm, you're definitely, if you're interested, I will sell the two stamp sets 
for $25 to anyone in the U.S. with free shipping. So it'll just be flat $25 for both sets. And then I'll probably try to squeeze some of the paper and leftover stickers and stuff into the same envelope, but it's there will be no shipping costs on top of that in the U.S. So if you're interested, email me. My email will be in the video description below. And um, yeah, so anyway, that's it for my video today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, like 10 cards, one kit, six by six paper pad tutorials, and more, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this super long video. I hope you found it inspiring. And uh, feel free to leave me a comment letting me know which cards you like best or your other ideas with the kit. And yeah, have an awesome day. Bye.